Hello, my name is Matthew, and I'm an engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. In this video, we'll be going over the basics of starting and making scans with the Artec Leo. Now, the Artec Leo is a one-of-a-kind scanner due to its total wireless scanning capabilities. This makes it perfect for scanning large objects outdoors or if you just want the extra mobility while scanning. If this is the first time launching your Leo, you'll be asked to log in and format your scanner. Now, after turning on your Leo, you'll be prompted with the main menu where we see our existing scans and data associated to the battery and storage space remaining. By clicking on an existing project, we can also see all existing scans associated to that project and reopen them if we wish to add more scan data to them or add more scans to the project. In the settings window, we have several tabs we can go into. The scan general tab will have information related to our system and storage. We can enable temperature control here as well to regulate the scanner's temperature for optimization. Going into system, we can find additional information and renew our scanner's trusted accounts and software version. The account tab is where we can log into the Leo and check licenses. Support will generate report logs to send over to Artec and allow people to remotely connect to the Leo and navigate its menus. Network has a couple of settings that we may change depending on the job. We can log into a Wi-Fi connection through this menu, but also enable the cast screen to browser setting, which will share the Leo scanning screen to people connected to the same Wi-Fi and access the IP address on a web browser. The connect to Leo setting will create a hotspot to wirelessly transfer data from the Leo in cases where a network or an SD card are not available. An important setting menu is the scanner's scanning one. Here, we can upload target systems for tracking encrypt the scan data, and adjust how our scans are captured via the texturing and project size optimization. Being able to record HD scan data is also enabled here. The number indicated in this setting is what fraction of scans that we capture will be converted into HD scan data. The last tab, Advanced, has settings related to encrypting the scan data when offloaded or recalibrating the scanner. The Leo has a separate calibration plate that can be used to quickly calibrate the scanner anywhere. Simply go into the recalibration menu, wait for the scanner to warm up shortly, and scan the plate as prompted. You'll have to follow different paths for the scanner to calibrate well, and it's a lot like a game. Once our settings are adjusted and the calibration is finished, we can exit the menu to save all the settings and begin scanning. To start a new project, click on the New Project button from the main menu or click on the red scanning trigger when no project is open. Once the object is visible within the scanning window and our distance histogram has the object colored green, we can click the scan button to begin capturing data. We'll have the scanner's temperature and total frames captured indicated at the top right. We know data is being captured when areas we pass through remain on the screen and our frame count goes up. You may find yourself toggling between the scan color settings often to check the quality and help with scanning distances. Clicking the red scan button again will stop our scan, showing us a preview of what was captured. The touchscreen lets us rotate the scan around and check if any areas are missing, indicated by red spots on the scan preview. Or we can enable the quality setting to see an estimated quality of the scan data. If everything looks good, we can back out of the scan from the top left and reorientate our part to capture a different orientation. Each scan is typically associated to a single orientation of the part, and we can have multiple scans within a project. If you wish to add more scan data to an existing scan, simply re-enable that scan and click on the scan trigger button again. Once the scanner recognizes the object and regains tracking, we can add more scan data to it. But it may be tough to do this on objects that have already changed their orientation and you're trying to recapture that scan. Try to keep an even distance, about a one foot away, from the object at all times. If your distance histogram begins appearing red, you may be too close, and blue means that you're too far away. When scanning a part, don't be afraid to rotate the scanner to different orientations as well to properly capture all possible angles of the part. The benefit of having a handheld scanner is the fact that we can reorientate the scanner itself using our wrist. 
The scanner will maintain tracking as long as it has a clear view of the part and the ability to match new frames to existing ones. If you lose tracking, move the scanner over a previous spot scan so it can regain and continue the scan from there. For curvy objects, it may be hard to maintain an even distance throughout the part. This is okay though, just make sure that you're keeping as normal to the surface as possible and slowly go around bends to maintain tracking. The Leo can also scan outdoors, although shiny metals in direct light aren't the easiest to scan. As long as you maintain a nice, even speed and follow key features, you'll be able to capture the object without any prep. If needed, however, powders or scanning spray can be used to coat an object to make it easier to capture that geometry. When it comes to scanning with the Leo, plan a path before you start the scan. Capture the features that are the most distinct first to give the scanner a nice starting spot to maintain tracking. Your scanning speed will naturally get faster as you use the Leo, which leads to smaller project size and quicker processing times. The Leo is perfect for objects about the size of a laptop to larger vehicles. It is also great for scanning people due to its fast scanning speed and the ability to capture rich color information. I hope you found this video helpful in getting started with the Leo. For more information on processing Leo data, please check out our Artec Studio 17 video where we do an in-depth dive on how to offload the Leo project and process the data to a complete mesh. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos on scanners, printers, and other engineering softwares.